Barney? What are you doing up there? No, don't lick it! God damn, I'm gonna have to clean that now. This is my new PC, what do you think? It's got my name on the side, a massive case. It's even got these handles on top. What do you think? Well, you could not be less interested if you tried. So today I thought I'd show you my brand new gaming PC because honestly, first of all, it's probably the most beastly PC that I've ever had the pleasure of owning. Secondly, because it meant I could show you Barney. And thirdly, this video is sponsored by Asus ROG and Nvidia. And I've got some awesome cutting edge parts inside this new PC. ROG put this thing together with their partners at Overclockers. And there's a link in the description to this PC itself. So you can go over to the Overclockers website and you can see every single spec of it if you want to. They even named it the Westy PC, which I think is really nice of them. But I'm going to cover off the main stuff here and show you some Battlefield 5 gameplay later on as well, because as we know, if a PC can run Battlefield multiplayer games at decent frame rates, then a PC can pretty much run anything and you'll never have to worry about it. Battlefield is a fairly demanding game when it comes to graphics, so if it can play Battlefield, it can pretty much play anything. So specifications wise, ROG definitely didn't hold back. They went all out on this. The whole PC is housed inside an ROG Strix Helios case, and it's got brushed aluminium frames, tempered glass side panels, and then to carry the thing, it's got handles on the top of it, because if you tried to carry it by putting your hands on the side, you just leave fingerprint marks all over the lovely glass. So it's got these really rugged handles that you pick up from the top and then you can carry the PC to where you want to go. And then they went a step further and they put my logo on the window that shows off all of the parts, which is really cool of them. And there's also an NVIDIA GeForce RTX logo on there and an Overclockers logo as well. So this thing is pretty much bespoke. It's like a unique case. But the case itself it is an absolute monster. Without all of the parts in it, the case weighs 18 kilos on its own. That's about 40 pounds. Now, Barney, who you saw in the intro, He's a fully grown Cocker Spaniel and he comes in at about 13 kilos, which is about 28 or 29 pounds. So this whole PC case without any of the parts in it weighs more than my fully grown dog. So it's a pretty chunky case, this one. It is sturdy as hell though, and that's the most important thing because this case is holding on to some pretty powerful hardware. The processor is an Intel Core i9-9900KS unit clocked at 4 GHz, and then it can boost on all of its 8 cores up to 5 GHz. And it's basically the top of the top when it comes to Intel CPUs at the moment. As I said, 8 cores, 16 threads, full power mode. It's just the best processor you can get right now for PC gaming. The motherboard is an ROG Maximus 6 Hero, and that gives you all the bells and whistles like M.2 SSD support. There's Wi-Fi built in as well if you need it. And then strapped to it is an ROG Ryujin CPU cooler. I hope I said that right. I think I did. I just hope I did. And it's got this lovely screen readout panel on the side that you can customize if you want to. It's a really nice cooler, actually. There's 32 gigabytes of RAM in this PC. Of course, it's got RGB all over it to match the rest of the system. And there's even an ROG 750 watt power supply unit as well to keep things ticking along. Now, in terms of graphics, we've got an ROG Strix OC GeForce RTX 2080 Ti graphics card here. That's arguably the card you want if you're looking to get the best performance or the best visuals out of games right now because it is an RTX card. So you can take advantage of that shiny new real-time ray tracing technology in supported games and Battlefield 5 happens to be one of those games. I'm going to be using Nvidia GeForce Experience here to lock in the recommended settings for this game and basically everything is set as far north as it can go with ray tracing turned on and it just looks amazing. Now I usually run my games at lower settings so that I can increase the frames per second, but sometimes you do have to appreciate 
how good games do look these days. I mean, it was only a few years ago that we were first looking at games running above 1080p resolution, and now it's normal to be playing at higher resolutions than that, higher frame rates than 60 FPS. We've now got real-time ray tracing going on, which is a really taxing graphical element at the moment, and it just looks awesome, I've got to say. The RTX part of this graphics card, that is what is accelerating the ray tracing in the game at the moment. And it's worth noting that ray tracing isn't just some super elitist technology, because both of the two next generation consoles have confirmed that they will be supporting ray tracing. So that technology that a year ago was seen as incredible, but you needed super powerful hardware to run it, that is starting to trickle through into other areas now. So it's starting to become more mainstream. Now, whilst you go ahead and feast your eyes on some delicious reflective Battlefield 5 ray tracing gameplay, I kind of want to talk about PC gaming a little bit because as the next generation of consoles does draw closer, I see more and more people that are showing interest in PC gaming, which is a little bit strange because of course most console gamers will just look forward to the next console, but I think that's because the consoles, apart from their operating systems, they're going to be closer than ever to just being PCs that you have in your living room next to your TV. Now the difference between PC and console when it comes to gameplay in multiplayer shooter games, because that's what I play, is that on PC, the better your components, the better your setup, the better time you are going to have in game. On console, everyone is sort of on the same level unless you pick up the more powerful version of the console, but you're all essentially playing on the same settings all of the time. If you've got a better PC, more frames per second being pushed out of that graphics card onto a higher refresh rate monitor, you do have somewhat of an advantage in multiplayer games because it becomes easier to be more precise with your aim with a mouse and keyboard when there are more frames being shown to you through that monitor. If you are a console gamer and you're looking to try and get into PC gaming, I can understand that it could be quite daunting with all the options you have with a myriad of different parts and different pieces that you have to put together. So that's where pre-built systems come in. And you've got companies like Overclockers who then work with brands like Asus ROG and Nvidia, and they'll put together a PC for you, and then you can just basically jump straight into gaming. Now there's always a debate going on whether you should buy a pre-built PC system or if you should spend the time building one yourself and buy all the parts separately. Now undoubtedly some of you will be wondering what kind of money you have to spend to get your hands on one of these kind of pre-built PCs, the Westie PC, with all the super high quality parts in it. In total right now, this PC build costs £3,599. But if you take the parts out and then you priced everything up separately, then the cost is roughly the same as having it pre-built for you. And if you don't really know how to build a PC, going through the process of picking out all the parts, reading reviews, and then actually putting the thing together, that's not easy if you've never done it before. And that's before you get to installing the operating system, downloading all the drivers, getting the game set up properly. It is a fairly lengthy process. And even for me, for someone who's built several of their own PCs in the past, and spent their younger years messing around with PCs, taking them apart and putting them back together again, it has taken me quite a bit of time to become confident in building my own PCs, especially with brand new parts, because of course, you don't want to break them, and they cost a lot of money. All of that fear of breaking something or messing something up goes away if you buy a pre-built PC like this one, because everything is built for you. All the cable management's done and probably done to a higher standard than what you could do yourself. The PC is stress tested to make sure it's running properly. The operating system is installed for you. So all you have to do is plug it into the wall, turn it on, connect it to the internet and start downloading games, basically. It's a much more simple process. And personally, I think buying pre-built is probably the best way to get into PC gaming these days. Plus, if you're looking to maybe make YouTube videos or stream games to Twitch, Nvidia have built in recording software to their graphics cards. It's called Shadowplay, and it makes it super easy to record your footage. All you have to do is hit Alt F9 on your keyboard and it starts recording for you. Or if you're streaming and you want to use OBS, then you can take advantage of their NVENC encoder that sits on the graphics card itself, and that takes all of the load off of your CPU, and it keeps your games running smoother 
whilst you start streaming. I really do think if you're gonna if you're gonna go and become a PC gamer, but you're not really sure what to do, you should just go pre-built because it's so much easier. If you are a gamer on the consoles and you mainly play shooter games like Battlefield and Call of Duty, or maybe you're looking at some of those more hardcore games like Escape from Tarkov that you can't play on console, then I really do think it is worth saving up and getting a PC for shooter games because there's no real debate about it. It is better playing on PC for first-person shooters. You get more precision using a mouse than you would an analog stick on a controller. Plus, like I said, most of those early access games like Tarkov they come out months, sometimes even years, before they do on console. It's just something worth thinking about if you are thinking of switching to PC. But thanks very much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A massive thank you to Asus ROG and NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and for giving me the Westy PC. Probably the most beastly PC I'm ever going to own. Make sure you click the link down below in the description and check out the PC on the Overclockers website. Going through that link really helps support the channel. But as I say, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.